Uh, so Stephanie, <laughs> I am curious to hear how you first got into this um, coaching and like teaching about emotionally intelligent parenting. Mm, you know what? It is not a really interesting story. I was, <laughs> so before I moved into emotional intelligence, I was a pediatric speech pathologist. And oh, cool. so I was used to working with kids and families, obviously on language and communication and things like mm -hmm. that. And I just discovered emotional intelligence online. Like I, <laughs> I think I came across it because a friend, um, like a, someone I knew was posting about it. And I was like, what is this? Ooh, like emotions? Weird. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I just, the stuff kept popping up and um, I was clicking on, you know, you read articles and watch YouTube videos and I was just captured. I, I was fascinated because I, I wasn't raised with emotional intelligence and mm -hmm. it seemed like this whole new buzzword and this new concept. So yeah, I loved it. And I realized pretty quickly I could, um, I could weave it into my work, but also the families that I worked with, the parents were obviously struggling with their kids, big emotions because yeah. kids are balls of emotion mm -hmm. and what comes with that challenging behaviors. And they just had no idea how to how to manage those and how to get their kids to cooperate and um, not, you know, shove down their emotions and say, I don't care, just get in the car. So, uh -huh. uh, yeah, so I kind of um, started using in my work and then thought, actually, I really love this. And, and to be honest, I was burning out as a speech pathologist. So, yeah, I made the transition and started working with families and parents in particular, um, moved away from working kid with kids, but working with the parents because I found that that was a lot more powerful and empowering. It's so interesting. That was, yep. that's me too. I yep. was an elementary school teacher, <laughs> uh, but before that I was in the entertainment industry in Los Angeles. So I've had a varied career, but uh, elementary school teacher, I stayed home with my son and I founded what is now no guilt mom. And then, um, I was making courses for kids, but that I realized when we were talking with parents that there could be a bigger impact if parents knew the same skills that I knew and use them with their kids. And it's just gone from there. And it's so like, I didn't think working with parents would be this delightful, uh, <laughs> As a teacher, like we were kind of taught to be scared of the parents, honestly, honestly, we were, um, oh. but working with parents has been the most amazing thing because you see like the relationships with kids just grow from there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's incredible. Now you said like you weren't raised that way. Like I, I was raised in like the grounding household and like my parents would get mad and everything. Like what was your childhood like? Mm. So my experience was definitely that traditional style of parenting. So kids are um, generally, you know, loved, but kind of seen and not heard. Like, don't talk back. Don't challenge the parent. Don't ask silly questions. Um, don't be rude. Don't be angry. Don't mm. be upset. You shouldn't be upset about this. It's not a big deal. It was an accident. You're fine. So a lot of yeah. that kind of, I want to just say, mm, invalidating of emotions oh, and how I felt and my did, experience. Did, did you get the whole, um, I'll give you something to cry about? That's like I'll the give you something to cry about. Yeah. yeah. I like the Coke classic of 80s, <sighs> 70s parenting. Uh, you want to cry, oh I'll God. give you something to cry about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And right. like suck it up buttercup. And I mean, uh -huh. I didn't, yeah. I, <laughs> I didn't hear that one specifically, but, um, but my parents are from the UK. So they were very, they came out here in the eighties and had us, me and my brother and sister. So they were very much, um, everything is sweeped under the rug. We don't really talk about it. Everything is fine. The next day we were back to normal. So I was learning that, oh, okay, well, I, I shouldn't feel like that. That was bad. That was wrong. Um, put it away and, and I need to be fine and okay and happy and polite and mm -hmm. yada, yada. So I actually uh, learned how to be a very good girl and I was Stop a it people down. pleaser. Stop oh, I down. stuffed it down. I was yeah. so good at stuffing <laughs> and actually maybe not a fun fact. I was going to say fun fact. I was so good at shoving it down that as I got into my older, like my younger teens, being an older kid, younger teens, and all throughout my teenage years uh, and into my twenties, I started fainting for quote unquote, no reason when I was really anxious or nervous. Oh, And so no. I, I went to doctors and, you know, specialists and things like that. And they were like, you are fit, you are healthy. Like I ate really well. I played a lot of basketball, you know, this, the story goes on. And, um, I realized in the end, really myself, when I learned about emotional intelligence that I thought, Oh my God, it's when I feel this certain level of heightened emotion that my body and my nervous system could not deal with that. It was too scary, too much, had no coping strategies for when mm -hmm. I was nervous or anxious or worried or whatever. And so my body 
took me out of the situation. Like that's what fainting is. <laughs> so in animals, it looks like playing dead. When, when there's a predator in humans, it looks like fainting or dissociating. So anyway, my um, huge, like I was the most emotionally unintelligent person, um, you know, that I just had no idea about how to handle emotions. And when they got too much, I just avoided or, you know, um, shoved it down. Yeah. And yeah, then I had kids. And so that was like, (laughs) okay. I'm curious, how did this fainting resolve itself? Yeah. Talk about body budget, like right there, man. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. So I love somewhere behind me will be um, a couple of Mona Della Hooks books. Uh, Uh I love love her. I love Mona. (laughs) Uh, So I um, came to realize that it was a few things. Obviously my, my emotional awareness, zero my ability to cope with strong emotions, zero. So um, one of my, the chapters in my book is like the emotionally unintelligent girl, because that was me. But also um, I realized that I, my confidence and my self-esteem and, and everything was really, really low. And so working, to be honest, just developing my own emotional intelligence was really the thing that now has, like I, a, a couple of months ago, I went, I flew down to Melbourne. So I'm in Sydney. I flew down mm-hmm. to Melbourne on my own with no, like, I didn't go with my husband. Uh, I, you know, on my own, I worked out my Ubers. I got to the conference hall. I spoke at a conference in front of just over a, th- uh, a thousand people, um, with a mic and mic'd up and with my slides up on the screen and not a shred of anxiety or worry or fear. Like I had no, no qualms about like, I used to think, what if I faint? What if I go up there and what if I talk? And then I let everyone down and mm-hmm. I can't even get up there had none of that. Like honestly, about two to five years, two, three, four, five years ago, I would not have even accepted. I wouldn't have even put myself out there. Now I, now I do speak in front of a lot of people and it's fine. Well, I am so curious on how you started becoming a more emotionally intelligent person. And we're going to get into that right after this. Um, So we were talking about how you developed your own emotional intelligence. That was how the fainting stopped. So how, like, what were the steps you went through to do that? (laughs) So I needed to first not be so afraid of emotions and think that they're bad and wrong and awkward Mm -hmm. and a sign of weakness. Like Mm -hmm. if we actually start there, then I got to learn, okay, well, maybe they're okay. And maybe I can just let myself feel them. Um, And when I felt emotions coming up, if I was frustrated at my husband, if I was angry with my kids, if I was really upset or disappointed about something that had happened, I actually started to let myself like sit in that for a little bit rather than mm-hmm. scroll on my phone or yeah. all of the <laughs> turn stuff on Netflix. To take away the attention for sure. Yeah. So I started to really um, learn to accept and even honor those emotions because I thought, well, they're, if they're going to come, you know, they're going to happen because if we have emotions there, you know, that's as much a part of being human as having a a brain or an elbow, like (laughs) I better get used to them. So um, I did that and I started to learn obviously the power behind emotions and that they were telling us a message and that I could kind of leverage them. Um, I could listen to them and I could think, oh, I should have said no to that. And I just said, yeah, of course I'll do it. I'll bake 12 cookies for the sale. I don't have time for this. (laughs) So I started to I really have had to work on my boundaries, which I sucked at, to, you know, yeah. for so long That's because I was a us. people pleaser. Yeah, I know. Us. Yeah, we were How all many people pleasers, both me and Brie, total people pleasers. Absolutely. And I love how you say like emotions were telling you something because I think that's mm-hmm. something that I learned very recently. Like I was I was today years old kind of recently when I learned that um, like anger could be telling you something because anger was something that was seen as wrong as a girl like you weren't supposed yeah. to be yeah, angry. We're not supposed to get angry. We don't, we don't you, look we don't look pretty when we're angry. Or you get mm-hmm. the other That's stereotype smart. where you're called like a bitch because you're yeah. angry when really it's mm-hmm. a very valid emotion. I mean, I used to work in um, an agency in Hollywood and all of the male agents would like curse and scream all the time. They were never called that. They, they, it were, they were seen as tough and like, you know, powerful and women who have that sort of anger don't. So I love how you said the you had to realize the emotions were telling you something. Yeah. Once mm-hmm. you realized yeah. they were telling you something and you could use them, like how did you use them? You said boundaries already, but was there a different <clears throat> way you used them? 
yeah, so I realized that there were um, a lot of things that were in my control that I just wasn't doing. I like setting boundaries, like speaking up. I had to find my voice. I'm still finding my voice. Like I can talk in front of a lot of people, but oh my gosh, if I have to talk to my husband about a really difficult, tricky issue, I'm like, I'd rather not. Something where you're like, I'm really putting myself out on the line. And if you say no, I'll be a little crushed. So I'm kind of nervous about saying it. Yeah. Yeah. I had to get really um, good at being vulnerable, especially to him. Like I can be super emotionally intelligent with my kids. Put me in front of my husband when, and we've known each other since we were 16 and I'm 37 now. So like it's been a while and um, I've had to, I've had to learn how to find my voice. It sounds so silly. Like he's a lovely guy, (laughs) but like I, I didn't want to disappoint him. I could not cope with the emotional reaction of if we had a disagreement or an argument or if I wanted to say I don't I don't um, agree with that or you know that was just like as you said crushing and so Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to find my feet and to and to find my self-worth and to to have boundaries to speak up when I disagreed or didn't like something or wanted to do something different so lots of things that I was like I have to put my big girl pants on right now (laughs) It's hard. I mean, like I can say I felt the same way talking to my husband and like I've been with him for gosh, over 20 years now. We got together when we were 19 and I'm like now 42, 42. Mm. And, <laughs> you kind of stop counting. All the 40. numbers. Um, but, but like um, I, I learned throughout the years and I wonder if you noticed this too about your husband. Like my husband does not put the same emphasis on those conversations, like emotional emphasis that I do. Whereas I'll Mm -hmm. be really worked up and think it's like such a big deal. Uh, For instance, tonight, I booked a yoga class tonight. Um, And in the past, I would have been like, oh my gosh, like, I I need to tell him that I booked this class. I need to talk to him first about booking the class. I need to make sure like he's okay that I go because like he's going to be home with the kids, like all of these things. And I learned that it's like no big deal. So tonight when I went to class, I just texted him. I'm like, book to yoga class tonight, 715. And he's like, thumbs up. And I'm like, cool. That's so good. <laughs> so like, do you see the same thing with your husband? Like, is one of you more emotionally attuned and one is not? Okay. So I have a lot to say about this, but I'm going to summarize it. Initially, no, we were not on the same page at mm-hmm. all. Like I said, I'm from my family's from the UK, so very mm-hmm. polite mm-hmm. and proper and conservative. His family is Portuguese. Oh, okay. so, oh they were like, they were like, we just lay it all out, man. Yeah. We lay it all oh, out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was intense. And so, <laughs> like, I remember when we were, oh, would have been, you know, late teens kind of thing, having one of our big arguments about, I don't know, who knows what. And he was like, I'm going to walk home. I think we didn't even have our license then. I don't know. And I was like, I could not handle the the sense that he was upset with me, angry with mm. me, um, not happy, like things were bad. I would have just wanted the ground to swallow up, swallow me up, basically. So we, we were very different. Um, as I said, now I've learned to find my voice and have boundaries and speak up and things like that. Yeah. But it took me not, this is the thing I tell a lot of parents, do not like shove this in front of your partners or husbands or, you know, face. Don't say, we need to be parent like, parenting like this. You need to be more emotionally intelligent. You shouldn't have yelled at the kids. That was too harsh. You're going to scar them. We cannot do that because what that does is like push them further away. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm going to say I've been, I have so been there. I remember a conversation years ago where my husband said something like, Steph, do you even need me here? because you've got this like sounds like you've got this and I was like oh crap and I (laughs) I had to realize like there's my way there's uh there's a beautiful quote there's my way and there's your way but as for the one way or the right way it does not exist Mm -hmm. and I was trying to get him to do it my way and and so now I've learned and this is what I talk about a lot is that we have to honor that our partner was not raised by the same parents we were, was not raised in the same household, in the same culture, in the same, you you know, everything. So of course they're going to react or respond differently to us. Of course Mm -hmm. they're going to be on a different page. They've had millions of little micro moments of, of learnings that have created their beliefs about how we, how we deal with emotions, what they are, if they're good or bad, Mm -hmm. if we talk about them or not. So it's been a journey, but um, he's actually, like we've, I've been doing this since 2019, like full time. And really, like I can say we're, we're virtually on the same page with our goals, our understanding, our ideas, That's great. but sometimes we go about it 
in yeah. a different way. And I do go, Ooh, I wouldn't have said it like that way, but, but I'm like, hands off. Like I can talk to you about it later if I really want to, but otherwise, you know, I've got to let you parent, like you're half, you're half of us. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I think that's a big thing right there. Like if it's really bugging you two hours later, then you can bring it up. But a lot of times like, or do either of you guys like have that? Like I find, and Joanne already knows this. I'm a pretty like Bam, big emotion. So like, I'll get really emotional about it, like in the moment, but then an hour or two later, I'll be like, what, what did we talk about? Like, <laughs> so that's like my husband, Bree. It's like Josh. He'll be like, I, I once, he once told me something that I said that really hurt his feelings. And I was crushed when he told me about it. I can't even remember what it was now, but I, I remember just feeling crushed. I was like at tears. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I did not mean it that way. And I brought it up maybe a month later and I'm like, I'm really thankful that you like told me that because I need to know that for the future. And he's like, I don't even remember that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been like getting a stomach ache for a month about it. Like it's just, it's uh, so funny. It's so funny. But I love how like you stated, like we both have different ways and we both parent like every, like in partnerships, you parent differently and that's totally okay mm. the hard thing is and i don't know if you've run into this yet stephanie with your kids um but when um when kids get older and they start telling you like i mean i'm the more emotionally intelligent parent in our partnership and so i'm very aware of my kids feelings and like what they need and my husband sometimes is not and my kids will come to me and be like dad said this to me or dad did this to me and like it's so hard to walk that line i mean i i'll tell you what i tell them and i want to hear what you tell your kids stephanie and we're going to do that right after this okay <laughs> before the break we were talking about what to say to kids when they approach you uh, about your parenting style being different than your partner's and it's like critical it's like they're being critical of it, it. no yeah yeah mm -hmm. like you've seen it right mm -hmm. brie Especially yeah, it puts being co-parenting. you co in that spot where you're like, oh yeah, right. So it, you guys were. It was funny. I was gonna interject the whole like, how long you guys have known your partners? My husband and I have been married for three years now, so <laughs> he's my second husband. We've known each other longer than that, but and it gets it gets complicated. But the point is, is that there's plenty of times where you're stuck in the middle, going like, oh crap. I feel like if I don't, you know how do I say this? If I'm not on my kid's side, then they feel like I'm leaving them out and vulnerable. But then if I go over to my, my husband and I'm critical about how he handled it, then I'm not honoring his way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also the naggy person that's coming and saying like, you shouldn't have done it that way. Like, and I, I'll run through all those scenarios. It's like, it's like that scene from the matrix with all the wind, with all the screens of all the possible things that could happen. I go through all of it. Yeah. In like five <gasps> seconds. Yeah. And I decide that I, I'm screwed no matter which way I go. So then I faint. No. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, what do you do, uh, Stephanie, is, in that situation? It, yeah, it is hard. And my yeah. uh, the thing that I try to remember is to be impartial um, and to, to honor my kids' emotions and their experience. So their perception, this is something I say a lot, their perception, someone else's um emotions or experience is just as true for them as mine are for me. Mm, yeah. So I cannot argue with my kids saying, dad was mean. He said, I can't play on the computer. You know, like I have to honor that that's real for them. So I validate that and I empathize with that. I'm like, you know what? That must be so hard to feel like you can't and that dad's being really mean. Like I'm, I can do that and yet remain impartial and not step over that line and be like, you know what? He's been really mean. I'm going to go talk to him because that's out of line. Dad should not have said that. Mm, right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then I say, but you know what? I wonder if dad made that comment because, or I've, or, you know, we have noticed that you have, you were on it for a few hours today or, you know, so I'm trying to, as you said, Brie, like it's a, oh, you're like walking that tightrope line right, it is walking that to tight not rope. just, because sometimes you'll be like, yeah, that was really mean. Oh my God. Like right in you your that? head. You're just like, oh, <laughs> like somebody's oh. on his period. No, <laughs> It's that time of the month it's for that dad. It's that time of the okay. month for dad. <laughs> Go. Uh, so yes, it is difficult. And I think, did you say, Brie, like, oh, either way, we're kind of screwed. Like yeah. there is an element yeah. of, there's an element of, you know what? We're not going to be able to raise our kids perfectly, emotionally, intelligently. We're not going to lose our, you know, flip our lid. Um, 
we're not going to not flip our lid uh, ever. You know, we're humans yeah. and we're going to we're going to be, um, you know, imperfect. Yeah. We're going to raise our voice. We're going to get triggered and things like that. And I actually think that's um, as long as we're not doing that 24 seven and, and scarring our right. kids, we can show and model to our kids. You know what? I am not perfect. And I, you know, flip my lid and I lose my cool. And I said yep. something yesterday at lunch and I didn't want to, you know, let's redo that. I'm sorry, honey. Like we can show them, yeah, you're going to stuff up. No, you don't have to beat yourselves up. And there is, it's never too late to repair and do like a redo and say, you know what, but can we do that again? I didn't, I didn't mean to yell. So I think that takes the pressure off kids too, so that when it they does. mess up or they blow up or erupt, then they're not going to beat themselves up yeah, later. Exactly. I, I push dad into the fire, like I, in a good way, in a really good way. I, cause it's worked, it's worked. So I, I do what yeah. you do stuff. It works in I yours. empathize. Yeah. I, I say everything and I'm like, have you talked to dad about this, that you're feeling this way? And a lot of times they, they're, they have not, they, they're scared yeah. to bring it up and everything. And I'm like, okay, well that's okay. Um, you know, if you're not comfortable with it, that's okay. And then I go talk to my husband, but I don't criticize him in any way. I'm just like, Hey, mm. like so-and-so's upset here. You may just want to go check in and see what's going on. And then they get their relationship and they get to repair that, um, based on, you know, he, he sometimes needs to be cued that people are upset. He's very stoic. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like the engineer mindset. And so, um, I found that helps in our house. Awesome. Yeah. I like that. I think it, it's, it's good to model that to the kids. It's good to give the kids the kind of plant those seeds. Have you talked to dad or do you want to say this or what would you say? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, do you want me to come with you? Sometimes I've gone with my kids because they are upset. Dad's been mean. And I, and I go and talk to them and I say, come on, I'll come with you. Yeah. Like to expect a five or a 10 year old, like a, a very physically smaller person, um, mentally, like cognitively, they're not as developed. Like there's all these things against the kids. I'm like, yes, yeah. I will come with you mm -hmm. until you're at the point where you're like, okay, We've done it that many times and, and most of the time dad listens and, and it goes, okay, I can do it on my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard thing to wrap your brain around though, because they're so comfortable telling you everything that you've done wrong to hurt them and upset them. <laughs> everything and they will not tell their dad what they, well, they they're just come, like it's the thing about how kids have that emotionally safe person in their life mm -hmm. normally it's a parent and, mm -hmm. and normally it's edible but that's the one that we see the whole gamut of emotions with because they're like dude i can completely melt down and act like a fool and this person aka mom a lot of the times will still love me, will still be there, will not like say negative things, but it does take a toll on us because oh, yeah. because of that, we hear it all. Mm -hmm. We hear mm -hmm. it all. Like I, I, I went through like a really rough, like we were talking about how um, we have teens and I went through like a really tough phase with my daughter, probably about a year and a half, two years ago, where I just felt like every day she was pushing that boundary of you said you'd love me no matter what <laughs> you said you'd love me no matter what so we're just gonna push and push and and say mean things and do mean things and see if you're still gonna be here when I'm done mm -hmm. and yeah it's a it's exhausting wow. it is exhausting <clears throat> it takes it I think you know what when we feel like whoa like this is a lot for us to handle number one um chris and neff's work around self-compassion oh, is incredible love her. Love chris and neff too. we've had her I'm on like, the podcast yes we have <laughs> she was amazing <laughs> agree yeah uh, she is great like fierce uh, it was it like fiercely love yourself fiercely or um uh, yeah now i can't remember the name of the book fierce <laughs> fierce self-compassion and it was a follow-up to self-compassion yeah it's yeah. actually built into our program into work. balance about the acknowledge you're in pain and then have the common humanity and then give yourself that comfort but yeah well. mm -hmm. chris and neff that compassion work it's amazing it's amazing yeah that that one piece you yeah. said joanne the self uh sorry the common humanity mm -hmm. that's what gets me through like conversations like this us three have had the same kind of experiences and we're, we're, we have different kids, different ages. We're on different sides of the world. Yeah. yeah. And oh my God, you guys get this too. You go through it too. It's not yeah. just me. Like that sense is just like, oh, I'm not, I'm not doing it all wrong. <laughs> it's so nice. We're all getting it. And like those emotions, they wear you down too. Like sometimes I'll be like, you know what? I haven't had to do much physical stuff today or, but 
all the emotions have been totally pushed upon me that you just feel at the end of the day, you're like, and I'm done and I need to retreat else I'm going to blow up. You know why? Because emotions, if we think about even the, just the word emotions, they're energy in motion, mm. like emotions, right? So it, it can drain your energy. When we get those spikes of emotion, when we get, when we get heightened, we get emotionally hijacked, yeah. <laughs> so to speak, angry, frustrated, or, or a grief or, or, you know, disappointment. What, what happens usually is we have a flood, like every cell in our body is flooded with like cortisol, adrenaline, like we have this full physiological reaction. So yeah, we could have done like nothing physical and yet we've had this big thing happen like grandma's in hospital or I've just been fired or my husband has said we need to talk and you know, like phrase. those, those <laughs> things, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like they're emotionally draining. So this is why when we dial up our emotional intelligence and we honor our emotions and we actually take steps to help ourselves regulate rather than just pushing on, well, I'll get to that later. Okay. I'm going to scroll on my phone. Like that's just like kind of, um, you know, trying to like, uh, fix the, the surface level. Like, you know, it, it's not going, okay, I think I need to clear the, the next, hour or my afternoon because I need I need to deal with this like emotionally I need to I don't have the brain space if I just push through I'm going to blow up at the next person that calls me mm -hmm. you know so it's it's being I see emotional intelligence as being smart with your emotions when a lot of us are not um and we were, we were not raised that way no. so it, yeah. it takes learning it does take <laughs> learning and it takes a lot of self-compassion throughout the whole process because learning to regulate your emotions is a very complex thing with a lot of different like roots and sources and things that you dig up along the way about why yep. you act the way you do it's intense <laughs> Yes. Yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of psychology behind it, which I kind of love. I love I'm a it. bit nerdy like that. I, I but, am yeah. nerdy as well. I'm right there with you. Um, Stephanie, what are you looking forward to right now? Oh, um, you know what? This week has been a really busy week. So I'm looking forward to the weekend where I have a friend's birthday celebration. Um, so that's a small, a small thing, but I think I'm looking forward to, I've got a few things coming up where I'm getting to speak about this exact stuff. Mm -hmm face-to-face, -face, like I do a lot of stuff online, but face-to-face -face, um, speaking to people about this. And I just think, oh my God, like you never quite know whose lives you're going to change with a conversation. Like even this one, mm -hmm. um, someone might hear it and go, oh my God, that makes so much sense. Thank God. <laughs> and so that's really exciting. That is exciting. Well, it's been a wonderful ta talking with you and chatting with you. And this has just been simply delightful. And thank you so much for coming on oh, and thank you guys. I've absolutely loved it. And we will, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.